Gaming Bolt presents the 15 worst PS2 games of all time. The PS2 is truly one of the greats. It is perhaps even the greatest video game console ever made. But nothing in this world is perfect, and even the best things in life have some low points. The PlayStation 2's library, for all of its incredible accomplishments, has a few blemishes to speak of as well. And in this feature, we're going to take a look at what we feel are the 15 worst PS2 games of all time. Let's get right into it. Surfing H3O Though Surfing H3O tried to be the Tony Hawk of surfing games, it failed miserably. Focusing more on collecting stuff than pulling off cool looking tricks while you ride the waves should have been the last thing this game wanted to do, but that is exactly what ended up happening. Though for the time it looked decent enough, and some might even say that it had a good soundtrack, a general lack of variety and an overbearing sense of boredom turned it into a game that is very hard to recommend. 25 to Life 25 to Life had some things going for it, sure, chief among which was its online component, which was by no means special, but could be fun in short doses. However, a general lack of originality, embarrassingly bad AI, and uninspired level design came together to deliver a completely forgettable and not at all enjoyable package. The PS2 era had no shortage of GTA clones, but 25 to Life is probably among the very worst. Beverly Hills Cop it's generally a bad idea to make video game adaptations of movies, which is something that history has taught us time and time again. But to make an adaptation as bad as Beverly Hills Cop must have taken a special amount of effort. Far from being a pretty unfaithful adaptation of the movie, the game was also bogged down by clunky mechanics, poor visuals, and a complete lack of imagination. Gravity Games Bike – Street Vert Dirt With a name like Gravity Games Bike – Street Vert Dirt, who would have expected this to be anything but a disaster? Sure, that's a little superficial and names are by no means representative of the quality of the actual product, but in this case, that is 100% true. Street Vert Dirt was a thoroughly bland and uninteresting game with no real mark or identity of its own, and the few things it did do, it didn't do very well. It was just a very rushed product in general and felt like it needed two to three more years in the oven. Crime Life – Gang Wars Here's yet another GTA clone, and like so many others in those days, and even in this list, it's an astonishingly bad game, with perhaps some of the worst visuals you could find in a game released on the PS2. Crime Life Gang Wars screamed low production values almost at first glance, while the mind-numbing repetition and lack of original ideas were emblematic of the game's complete creative deficiencies. Bad Boys Miami Takedown Bad Boys Miami Takedown is the poster boy for horrible video game adaptations of films, but don't worry, there's a lot more coming in this feature. Terrible shooting mechanics and a total lack of anything to do but watch things explode almost constantly made it a mind-numbing experience at its very core. With added layers such as hilariously bad writing, embarrassing voice acting, and terrible visuals, Army Men Green Rogue Sometimes games can take obnoxious level design a bit too far. It's never a good thing to have in your game, even in small doses, but when that's basically all a game does, it can be overbearing. Army Men Green Rogue's constantly scrolling levels made it a dreadful experience, while its slow pacing and extremely low production values did the game no favors either. It's hard to find a game that is as unwilling to do anything fun as this one. Crusty Demons it's hard to find anyone in today's day and age who's played this game or even knows this existed, but perhaps maybe that's for the best. Pulling off stylish tricks and stunts as a central part of the experience is a fundamentally interesting concept, but Krusty Demons got it very, very wrong. It was boring, it was broken, it was ugly to look at, it was not even slightly enjoyable. Pro Evolution Soccer Management Konami has done great work with its football simulation series Pro Evolution Soccer over the years, and with Pro Evolution Soccer Management, they tried their hand at the management aspect of the experience. As it turns out, not a very good idea. It wasn't a game completely without merits, certainly. It was a much better experience than most other games on this list, but the game mostly failed to capture the pure joy of management simulation that its competitor, Football Manager, was and is so good at. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus To be fair, fans of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles property might have found some enjoyment in Battle Nexus, but for anyone who wasn't completely devoted to it or was expecting at least a decent game, it proved to be a massive disappointment. 
The game was completely lacking in depth and originality, making the entire experience bland and totally forgettable, while frustratingly executed platforming sections and unresponsive controls also turned out to be some pretty major flaws. Catwoman Even when a video game is adapting a good movie, it's hard for it to be anything more than passable. When it's adapting a movie that is as bad as Catwoman, it can be downright disastrous. Which is exactly what Catwoman was. Its visuals were considered to be more than just decent at the time, while some outside opinions might even call its whip-centric acrobatics and combat occasionally enjoyable. But a terrible camera, shoddy controls, and hilariously bad writing and voice work made for a game that was best left untouched. Superman Returns Superman Returns was by no means a bad film. A thoroughly forgettable one, sure, but there have been superhero films before and after that were much, much worse. The same, however, cannot be said of the game based on the film. Superman has a terrible history in the video game's medium, and Superman Returns was another one of its many, many low points. Its large open world was a highlight, sure, and flying around could actually be fun at times, but essentially, that was pretty much all there was to it. It was a shallow experience that was lacking in any meaningful content and, as such, was pretty hard to recommend to anyone but the most devoted Superman fans. Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines Oh, look, another bad movie tie-in. What a surprise. Terminator 3 thought it was a good idea to take the movie's story and put it into a first-person shooter, which actually could have worked out, but it didn't. The enemy AI was broken, making the shooting mechanics, i.e. the entire game, similarly mindless, while the shooting mechanics themselves lacked any sort of weight whatsoever. Combined with bland visuals and frustrating level design, those issues made for a very forgettable game. Fight Club Oh look, another bad movie tie-in! What a surprise! Deja vu, anyone? And yet another example of a perfectly good, even great, movie being turned into a less-than-mediocre video game. I don't want to say absolutely no effort must have gone into the creation of this game, at least some people must have worked hard on some aspects, but that's definitely what it felt and looked like. It was essentially a shallow game built solely around thoughtless button mashing disguised as a fighter. Knight Rider 2 Knight Rider 2 failed at almost everything that a racing game should do. In fact, it failed at almost everything a game should do, period. Racing was no fun whatsoever thanks to poor track design and boring and monotonous gameplay, while its completely bland visual design meant that the game wasn't even fun to look at. The less said about Knight Rider 2, the better. Let it be forgotten in peace. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.